I'm not going to insult you by speaking uh, Francais ce soir. Um, I appreciate uh, Everybody okay with Anglais? Okay, great. Um, so my name is Andrew Ross. Uh, I work for an organization called the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, it's a vendor neutral, not-for-profit organization that helps uh, open source projects as well as companies who build products with open source. Uh, it's been doing so for about 10 years. Um, Location Tech, as Daniel mentioned, is a working group uh, that's part of the Eclipse Foundation and hosted by the Eclipse Foundation. And uh, as Daniel was also saying, this is uh, the second of six events uh, that we're doing, so, uh, community building and outreach. Um, so um, believe it or not, I'm here this evening and I'm going to be in Boston uh, in a matter of hours. So this is going to be very interesting to watch. So uh, before we go any further, I'd actually li like to thank our generous sponsors, including uh, MapGears. Uh, for, uh, without their support, we would not be able to put on these events. So please uh, join me in thanking them. As well, I'd also like to thank uh, Simon. Uh, where'd you go, Simon? Uh, who organized? Yep, thank you, Simon. So um, just a quick show of hands, how many people here work with open source on a daily basis, uh, either contributing to an open source project or have a product that's based on open source? Okay, uh, so roughly half, and it looks like roughly half uh, probably could learn a little bit about open source and that's great. Um, this is a very, very simple chart. I'm not gonna read it to you. Uh, the main difference between closed source or proprietary technology uh, software and open source software are a series of rights that you, that you receive. Uh, and these are the three key ones. Uh, so basically, the uh, ability to access the source code, uh, so you can download it and see it, which is actually a really good way to learn. Um, you can modify it uh, and, and then redistribute it, and that's uh, very useful for building products. And I'm gonna talk more about that in a, in a, in a second. Now, you may use other software, uh, things like Internet Explorer. Um, it's free, you can download it and install it, uh, but it's not open source. So you cannot actually um, uh, access the source code freely, you know, make a derivative work and, with, you know, um, uh, and build a product on top of that. Same thing with Skype. So there's a number of different technologies that are free, uh, but they should not be confused with open source software. <clears throat> now, why does this matter? Um, what's interesting is that, uh, uh, how many people in here use Firefox? Quite a few, okay. Um, now, uh, how many people in here think they use open source every single day? Okay, actually a kind of a small number, maybe, maybe half. The, the reality is actually a lot of uh, uh, technologies that you use uh, every day are, are based on open source, you just don't know it. It's actually built under the covers. So when you use something like Google or Netflix or Amazon or eBay or a large number of uh, websites and, and um, uh, products and services, so um, I'm sure some of, the people, some of the people in here have a smartphone or maybe they've got um, um, uh, a uh, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, uh, that's actually based on open source technology. And so this picture here shows that you can take open source technology, build it into a product, provide something unique that your company has unique special um, ability and skills, uh, and provide a useful uh, end user experience. And, and that's valuable to customers and they'll actually pay, pay good money for that. Um, and you can use it. And so in some cases, um, a large portion of the internet is actually running on the Apache web server. Uh, the bind DNS server uh, runs uh, and powers a, a great portion of the internet. So a lot of these technologies are used under the covers and you may not even be aware of it. And that's okay, that's a good thing. So these are just a few more examples. So things like Twitter. Um, a lot of cars actually have open source technology uh, built into them. Um, Facebook, Google, Amazon, you name it. Uh, this is just actually a, a small, small piece. Uh, a large amount of uh, software these days is based on open source technology. Now, um, like me, uh, what you're probably interested in most is the user experience. I want the search engine to work really well. I want the online store to help me find the products that I'm looking for. I want my car to work and work well and have useful features. Uh, so being able to have technology that people contribute to and sh share the costs and the risk uh, under the covers is actually a really good thing. So uh, what's interesting, uh, when you talk about open source, a lot of people talk about saving money. It's free, I can download it and use it for free. That's great, it really is good. Uh, that it's, it's free to acquire. Um, but what's even more important, and this is what Location Tech is all about, is a collaboration protocol. It's a protocol in which organizations, who may in fact be competitors in the industry, can actually collaborate and work together on the same technology. Um, I'll show you some, some information uh, later on, about uh, three or four slides, I think, if my memory serves me, that makes this a little bit more clear. So why does this matter? Um, history has shown that open wins every time. 
that um, if you're following the smartphone industry, you'll probably notice that uh, Apple had done very well uh, with iPhone and had a, a fairly commanding lead and was leading over other organizations, um, uh, Research in Motion, BlackBerry, um, Microsoft, Nokia. Uh, and then along came, along came Android and is doing quite well and, and starting to dominate the smartphone industry. Uh, so open, open uh, wins in almost every case. <coughs> So uh, what's interesting, if you look at companies, so I've been involved with open source since the 90, 1990s. Um, this was some research done out of Carleton University in, in Ottawa. Uh, and there's a gentleman who uh, was at the time the CTO officer of uh, Nortel. Um, and he colla they collaborated on some research looking at, at organizations and their relationship with open source. And so the first one, um, or some organizations certainly in the, in the early days would basically deny open source. They say, ah, it's not secure, it's not reliable. Um, uh, this is people have gone so far as to call it a cancer. So basically having a very negative position with open source. Yeah, a few people are laughing about that. So um, Inevitably, um, the, uh, the engineering department has to get work done. They start using it, basically looking for components they can use to, to make their lives easier. So they start uh, trying it out, finding it's pretty good, pretty close to what they need, modifying it. So they go from using it to contributing it. And eventually, when uh, they get, get to know it very well, they start championing it. So they start basically talking about it at conferences, talking about it at events like this, uh, recommending it to other people. Uh, so all of this is basically uh, driven largely out of the uh, engineering or software development uh, teams. But uh, over time, the organization eventually recognizes the tremendous value that they're getting out of the software, and they start to uh, look at it from a business perspective. And so in that case, they start looking at collaborating, so that, that collaboration protocol that I was talking about earlier. So working with other organizations, even competitors, and um, uh, pushing the state of the art forward and allowing them to be more competitive in the industry based on their use of open source. So basically, it becomes strategic and important to their company, not just uh, from a superficial use, use point of view, but also from a, a strategy and innovation perspective. And then, of course, near the end, they start to redefine what it is they do. So uh, there's a lot of organizations that um, uh, using open source came, became uh, a fairly profound shift in their business strategy and has worked very successfully for them. Uh, other organizations who continue to fight open source, so how many people have heard of a company called SCO? Okay, well, that's actually, that's why you haven't heard of SCO. SEO? <laughs> yes, yeah, SEO. Yeah, so they, they basically uh, uh, fought uh, Linux and open source and tried to sue for the rights to, to Linux. Mm -hmm. uh, they lost that very badly, went bankrupt, tried again, um, and it's a long story, so uh, read about it in Wikipedia. Uh, even Microsoft actually has been very pro-open source uh, in, in more recent times. So, so um, what is location tech? <coughs> so the organization I work for, Eclipse Foundation, has been supporting open source projects and companies building products on open source for a very long time, for about 10 years. Uh, there's about 9 million people using the software around the world. Uh, we've got over 200 companies that are working with us. I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, so there's two halves to what we do. So one, one side is nurturing the open source projects and building community for the open source projects. And this is why we come out and, and meet with you and talk with you and also um, you know, meet businesses to uh, help give you a bit of an idea of some of the services that are available. And the other side is the trade association. So we provide a large number of you know, marketing and intellectual property management um, uh, and other services that help um, uh, businesses connect and, and, and partner with each other and you know, buy and sell mm -hmm. from each other, really a, a create a marketplace, if you will, uh, around technology based on open source. So uh, Location Tech is the geospatial working group at, at Eclipse. So um, I'll talk a little in a second about some of the technologies that are involved with that. So uh, one of the things that makes us a little bit different than some of the other groups out there uh, is we have a staff of 20 uh, that provide a variety of services. I talked about marketing and intellectual property management. Um, we have a, um, an IT team, a uh, release engineering team. Uh, actually, Ton, our release engineer is here, so just wave hi, Ton. Hello. Um, so we have a, our member network and, of course, a community. Uh, and what this does is it, it brings together organizations, people, uh, open source projects, and allows them to collaborate together. Uh, what's very important here is, of course, the governance model. So this is basically how people um, make decisions and, and, and collaborate and work together. So um, I use a, a metaphor to explain this, that uh, people can play sports, they can go take a ball, uh, step out into a field, play a pickup game of soccer or football if you're coming from Europe, um, and it's easy. And in, in fact, they don't have to be very complicated in terms of the rules. But um, as you get more formal, so say you're not just playing with friends, you're playing uh, another team across town or a team from another city, 
maybe you're traveling to another city, um, you're going to start having a referee, you're going to have the rules written down, you're going to agree upon which rules you follow. And this is where the governance come in, comes in. And so good governance can make all the difference to help grow that ecosystem and help build success for everybody. And so this is what we've been doing uh, and what we're bringing to Location Tech. So, um, as I said, we've worked with a large number of companies. So these are companies like uh, Oracle, Red Hat, Intel, Google, um, uh, large and small. So um, what's, what's neat is that our governance model levels the playing field so that small companies actually are, are equally valued as large companies. Their vote counts just as much. And so this actually provides a really ba well-balanced perspective in terms of what sh we should do and where we should go. Uh, in terms of projects, so this is primarily on the Eclipse side. So on the Eclipse side, uh, we have uh, about 150 projects at the moment, or sorry, 250 projects. Um, uh, each year, every year, um, in June, we release uh, a simultane simultaneous release of software. So it's about 58 million lines of code. And um, uh, that's useful because companies can build a product on it and they know that each of the projects in, the, in that release will interoperate with each other. They'll, they'll, they'll work together. So it can save them a lot of time testing. Um, and uh, they can use those components and build products and services on top of that. So that's quite useful. Uh, I mentioned how, how widely things are used er, uh, earlier. And this is what I I'd alluded to earlier. Um, so what's really neat is actually seeing companies who normally compete with each other starting to, to collaborate and work together. So some of these uh, down here, uh, Oracle, IBM, and SAP, three huge companies who are very fierce competitors in the industry, but they're all contributing to the same project, um, which is really, really great to see. And that's what's good about that is that the vitality of that open source project will live beyond uh, any individual company and also it means the technology will evolve uh, quickly and be more valuable and more useful to, to other people. So uh, each of you can basically pick up this project and build a product on it tomorrow if you wanted to. So um, that's it. Um, I'll, I don't know if we have time for questions, but uh, my contact information is here. Um, I encourage you to um, uh, pop by and, and talk with me. And uh, if you're interested in getting involved, there's information here as well. So thank you very much, everybody.